Hey, welcome to the channel. In the last episode, I installed the rocker shafts and prepared for the final assembly of the engine. In this episode, we'll go ahead and set the preload on the lifters and get everything ready to button up. We're on top dead center, so we know we're on the lowest part of the base circle of the cam. And we're going to do this for each cylinder. Now, you want to make sure push rods are loose. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it down till it touches. Now this one's really snug on this front one. This one hasn't been adjusted a lot so it's got plenty of traction in its threads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it down until I feel it right there. Alright and then the same thing here. I want to get a hold of it. I'm going to rock it down until it touches. Not quite there yet. Right there. Okay, so I am touching the rocker. I am touching the rocker to the valve, I should say. And I'm touching the push rod on the lifter. Now this is where we want to put in our 55 thousandths preload. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I didn't bring the right dial gauge with me today because I could have screwed it into the hole here and then turned this and followed the rocker body down. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take my dial caliper and I'm going to make a measurement from the top of the nut to the top of the rocker and then I'm going to turn this down 55 thousandths. That's going to put 55 thousandths preload on my lifter which should, if everything in a perfect world, give me zero lash out here on my valve tip. Then when we start the engine up, keeping in mind that this is cold. Those are cold dimensions. Once we start the engine up and get it warmed up, it may take the ticking and making a little lifter noise. As I mentioned earlier, Having the adjustable solid valve train style rocker arms will let us take out and fine tune any lifter noise we get from the hydraulics because of any dimensional tolerances caused by the engine being redone. We know that we're at zero right now. We're just barely touching the rocker to the valve and the rocker to the push rod and the push rod to the lifter. So we're going to take our caliper and we're going to get us a dimension. And what I'm going to do is slide right down from the top of the nut to the top of the rocker. Okay, and what does that give us? And of course it's going to be a little different because I moved it. Okay, so that's going to give us 520. Now we're going to subtract 55 thousandths from 520. So we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70 is 50. So I'm going to drop it back down to 65 thousandths. There we go. We got to bring it up about two threads. So I'm going to go ahead and go one full turn. And as you can see, it's coming up because I'm pushing against the lifter and the lifter's collapsing. And I'm going to stop right there and check it. That's real close. We got to go just a hair more. I slipped under there. And there we go. That's 55 thousandths. So we have our preload. As you can see, we can still push the lifter. So we have room for adjustment. This one's ready to go. So now I'll drop over to this one. And again, 
we know there's variation in mass produced parts so we're going to separately measure this one and that one measured up at uh, 478 so then I'm going to back off pull around to 28 and then take off five more which puts me at 23 I'll lock it down and that was actually a full turn in about three quarters on that first one so we'll go a full turn a half and a little bit now see how much easier that one turned this is a replacement rocker in this kit these are original so these have been adjusted this one hasn't been adjusted much alright and I need to go a little bit more so the thread on this one is also not the same as the thread on that one so we'll give it about a half a turn here That was a little too much. So I'll go back the other way. i go just a little bit more. There we go. And we can move it. Now this one's in a little bit better position, got a little more oil in it, but you can move it. Reach in here and give it a spin, make sure nothing's jammed up. This, this cylinder's ready to go. And that's all there is to it. The only thing left to do is once we fire it up and it warms up, if any of them are ticking, we can just reach in here and give them a little twist and get the ticking to go away. And then she's ready to run 150,000 miles or so if you change the oil and take good care of it. And it'll last longer than that, really. So it's all a matter of how you take care of it and how you treat it. When you get done, you want to go back and take and look at your shield and make sure that the oil directing shield hasn't hit the valve springs. And if it does, you just take you a pretty wide screwdriver and reach down there like this one's a little close but not bad and you just kind of get in there and wiggle it enough to make sure you're not hitting your valve springs now the next thing we'll do and if you notice you check and make sure that none of your cups are hitting because the cup then is the clearance issue if you're too tight the bulge of the cup can hit the rocker arm and we're clear on these because enough of these this one's pushed all the way down now, where the push rod clearance issue comes in, notice that this one's all the way up, and this push rod's all the way at the bottom of the hole. So as this lifter comes up and pushes this rocker, this push rod's going to move towards the center of the hole. So right now, I'm seeing no possible clearance issues. This one's a little tight, but it's not touching. This one's been clearanced a lot in the past. So is this one. This one's not touching. This one's not touching. We'll go around the other side here. Now, I did put fatter push rods in this than it had originally. And none of them are touching. So, with this lift to cam, we should be just fine. So, we're almost done. I got to get a distributor in this thing before I can set the rest of the lifters. And once we do that, it's just a matter of getting the flywheel on it and the spacer plate in it and getting it back into the vehicle and making sure we got all our clearances good and uh, we'll be ready to start it up. i got a few more questions to answer. So we'll do that in a coming video. And as always, practice your skills, learn a new one. Either way, turn them into craftsmanship. You never know how far they'll take you. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this has been Fab Race Mod Repeat. Have a great day.